Hello makers, welcome to 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe and today we're going to talk about the Anycubic i3 Mega. Stick around! Welcome back makers. So today is time for me to give you my rundown of the Anycubic i3 Mega, which is the version one. Now there is a second version that just came out, which has a few differences, but I'll get to those in the end. This i3 Mega right here boasts a print volume of 210 by 210 by 205 on the Z height. It comes with quite a few bells and whistles. It has an inductive sensor to assist you when doing the bed leveling. It comes with a run out filament sensor and also with with a power off or zoom function, all features which are in my mind highly needed at this day and age with all the printers that are coming out. It also has a pause and resume function which comes in very handy if you want to change the color of the filament in mid print. Finally, it also has a clone E3D V5 J head hot end, which means that Eventually you can upgrade it to an original if you want. However, the one thing that I found really convenient is that I can change the nozzles to uh, original E3D, which I have done in order to put a hardened steel nozzle and print some special stuff with it, which I'll get to soon. Now I unboxed this printer live during a stream and it was, it was one of the easiest printers to put together. It comes in literally two pieces and I think about eight screws in total just to stick the gantry on the base. And that was it, it was ready to print. So I threw in some a Printer Pro yellow PLA and I started printing and this, was the result. Now, these were printed without me doing absolutely any settings adjustment whatsoever. I simply threw in the SD card that came in with the printer and I started printing with standard PLA. And I was quite impressed. The uh, prints that came out at 200 microns looked really, really good. The only problem that I had was that when they did the testing of this printer, it had black filament so there was still some residue which can be seen on the hat of the male owl but other than that gorgeous result next up i printed the uh, benji of course i have to print a benji and the results were okay i wasn't really impressed mainly for uh, the fact that i still had some black residue inside the nozzle which was starting to bug me so after this print, I actually cleaned out the nozzle as best as I could. Other than the retraction settings, which I was, I had not set just right. Um, they were still set at one millimeter, which for a Bowden, it, it's way too low. It should be at least three, 3.5. However, it wasn't that bad. It came out okay, just the stringing and that bit of tainted yellow filament. Instantly after doing that, I wanted to print something special. And after watching Game of Thrones uh, the last few episodes, I wanted to get me a dragon. Now, seeing as I can get a real dragon, I can get a model of a dragon. And this is it. This was printed in a Printer Pro PETG. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Granted, there's a bit of stringing. I could have said that a bit better. However, for a first test print on PETG, this looks absolutely glorious. I was very, very, very happy with the results. And now I got me a dragon. Next, I threw in some stone fill, which Form Futura have sent me in order to test out. And I decided to print the God of Open RC, Daniel Noré. And it came out actually really well. There seems to have been, I, I, it's probably a bit of either overheating, I'm not exactly sure what happened, but you can see that there is kind of like a color transition in the filament. I don't know if that's for the filament or inconsistent heat of the nozzle, but if it wasn't for that, the print came out actually quite well. There is a bit of stringing because it's a very stringy filament. Um, I could have once again set it up a bit better, but apart from the stringing, I think the results actually came out really well. And now Daniel Noray's head is a multi. Next up, I decided to try some R Titan X from Form Futura, which is this black filament right here. Next, I decided to uh, throw in the uh, hardened steel nozzle and also use Form Futura's R Titan X uh, filament. Now this is a recycled 
ABS based filament which is very good for high impact and also strength. So I decided to print some parts for the upcoming upgrades I am doing on the ANET A8. Now these were all printed at 200 microns and I have to say the results were absolutely gorgeous. Once dialing in the settings, the layers are consistent, their precise stringing was minimal. This particular filament um, works very well as in it doesn't warp. Even though it's ABS based, it really doesn't warp and it prints gloriously. Even the smell, while still there's a still that ABS smell. It's not as strong as the standard ABS smell. So I was really, really, really happy with the way it turned out. Now, I didn't need to use the hardened steel nozzle, but I wanted to test it out, so I did. Next up, I decided to throw in some Filamentum Rapunzel Silver, which was the first time I had ever used it, and print this scroll. And I have to say that this is by far one of the most beautiful prints that I have ever made. This was printed at 100 microns and you can barely see the layers themselves. It is absolutely glorious. It's almost flawless. It printed without supports. So there is a bit of issues on the underside where there are no support whatsoever. However, the finish on it on the outside is glorious. So I am extremely happy that I got the settings right. So much so that I wanted to replicate the result and print this castle tower right here. And once again, the results were glorious. And instantly I said, okay, 100 microns is definitely the print settings I will be using with this print. Next up, I decided to print some Polyalchemy Elixir and this is it right here. This is the Purple Rain, which is a gorgeous lilac type color. And it was recently released by Polyalchemy. So I'm testing it out. And I have to say that the color is gorgeous and more so the fact that printing it at 100 microns on this printer, the sheen just really comes out beautifully. So I couldn't be happier with the results. It is absolutely gorgeous. And finally, I decided to go back to PETG, this time in some Zortrax Z-Gloss. And this is the result right here. The color is absolutely gorgeous. Now this was printed with three perimeters and 0% infill. So it's completely hollow on the inside. And once again, at 100 microns, it printed beautifully. The retraction settings were scaled up. I set this to six millimeters due to the fact that it's about an extruder and I have to say I am very 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 happy so once again this proved to me that this printer can seriously churn out beautiful quality prints. So what do I think about the Anycubic i3 Mega? I actually really really like this printer especially for detailed prints it churns out some really beautiful quality prints. The structure is extremely solid it's a full steel frame. There is a version 2 now this is the version 1 and the difference is the version 2 has an ultra base which is a kind of like a different feel it's a different surface which um, means you can take prints off a bit easier and it sticks much more and it does not have an inductive sensor which I will get to in a little bit. However for about 330-340 euros I think that is quite a bargain for this kind of printer. It comes with lots of bells and whistles. The runout filament sensor works really well. I had tested it during the live stream with this print and with the uh, with the Benchy so it worked really well as you can see it finished and the power off resume function also works which is once again something that i think should become standard in all printers the touchscreen lcd is actually quite intuitive it, it's not the most responsive lcd screen that i've seen so sometimes you need to tap harder than you think you need to but it works and it's easily understandable. It's big icons, so you know what to do. You have a filament in and out function, preheat, cooling down function, bed leveling function, or better yet, assisted bed leveling function. It has a SD card, it can be tethered. So all in all, it has everything you could possibly want from a 3D printer. Now, there are a few things that I need to mention about this printer, which are extremely important because one of them could be very, very frustrating for a lot of people. A hot end fan, which cools down the sort of the top part of the hot end when you have the cooling fins, that fan, at least on this machine that I received, was underpowered. So it wasn't cooling that quickly enough. And what happened was I was getting a lot of jams and clicking due to heat creep. And I noticed this because after a jam, I took the PTFE tube out 
and I noticed that it was really, really hot. And after disassembling the uh, hot end unit, I noticed that the fan was barely moving. So I had to replace that fan with one of my own that I had spared. Then there are a couple of things about the sensor for the bed leveling. Now this is not auto bed leveling, it's assisted bed leveling. All the sensor does is gives you an idea of how far the hot end has to be from the build plate. And it does this by kind of like repeating a sound like a beep. And as soon as you hear it chirping, you know that um, when you're adjusting the height, you know you're almost at the right height. However, I've noticed that it's never at the right height. So you still, once printing, I had to do a bit of live adjustments to get the first layer just right. The second thing I noticed is that it kept on losing its um, its alignment from the bed. So every two or three prints, I had to readjust the bed to make sure that I was still getting the right consistent layers because while one print was coming out fine on the first layer, I had elephant's foot on the next one. So I had to readjust the bed. So that is something to keep in mind, which is probably why they removed the sensor from version number two of the Anycubic i3 Mega. The last thing I noticed concerns the runout filament sensor. Now that is an absolutely great add-on to have because if you're unsure about the amount of filament that you have left for a print, this helps because as soon as it runs out and goes through this sensor right here, um, it just beeps, pauses, removes the nozzle from the part and just waits for you to load more filament. So it works very well. However, one thing I need to point out, um, and this is something I happened to come across by chance because I changed the spool of filament. I started a print and as soon as I finished the print and everything was fine and I came to take out the filament, I realized I had forgotten to run the filament through the filament sensor and yet the printer still printed. So if you start to print without putting filament through or putting it perfectly right, it will still start and you wouldn't know if your filament runs out. So it's very, very important that you never forget to run the filament through the sensor if you have a little bit left on the spool. Now in my case, most of the spools I used had a lot of filament, so most of the times I did not use the sensor. And that's it for my thoughts on the Anacubic i3 Mega. I think it's actually a really good printer. I am very happy with it. I can tell you that everything that needs to be printed at 100 microns also needs to be printed on this printer, at least in my case, because it just produces some really glorious results. So I am extremely happy with it. Yes, it has a few issues, but that comes with every single printer whatsoever. I might end up doing a conversion to an original E3D V6 hotend, um, which I think will work just fine on this printer. But for now, it's still printing. It's printing very well. So I don't think it needs to be modified in any way. That is it for me, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review of the Anacubic i3 Mega, which I know a lot of you have requested. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I will try to answer them as best as I can. And if you want more information on the Anacubic i3 Mega, I will leave affiliate links in the um, video description below. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and as always, Happy making, guys.